All things are possible to those who believe in God. And we are so glad that you're joining us for Hope Today because we love to spend the next 30 minutes uplifting you, encouraging you, and inspiring you from wherever you are here in Pittsburgh or all over the country. We're so glad you're joining us today. Pastor Jay, Amy, and I are all together. And Amy, we are so excited for our guest today. Oh my gosh. If you are a Pittsburgh Steeler fan, then you are going to want to buckle your seatbelt, get your favorite drink right now, glue into the TV because Ryan Shazier is in the house with his new book, Walking Miracle. Wow, are you going to be encouraged how faith, positive thinking, and passion for football brought me back from paralysis and helped me find purpose. God has a purpose for your life, and today you're going to get it in Jesus' name. We know it's so good getting a chance to talk with him just a little bit. It really helps you to see the positivity that he yeah. carried with, the message. And there's many of you right now that may be fighting some things that are paralyzing your life. You are going to get some really good insight. You're going to get some practical tools and some hope to bring you through whatever situation and mountain that you're needing to climb. Yeah, that's so right, Pastor Jay, because I know there's so many people, so many things that we're dealing things and walking through things, but it's so important when we have our mindset on Jesus, when we have our mindset on Christ, and anything is possible so that we can overcome these hurdles, overcome these challenges. And I just want to encourage you today, if that's you today, if you're dealing with a situation, maybe you're dealing with an injury, maybe there's something going on in your family, know that we are always standing by here at Hope Today on our prayer line at 888-665-4483. So give us a call. We want to stand in agreement with you today. You know, there's a lot of you out there that are watching right now that maybe you're battling with different things, unexpected events that happen that are detours. But you know what? None of them took God by surprise. And we always like to have a scripture. And I think this is such an apropos scripture that'll really be a blessing to you and feed your faith. And it comes from the book of Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. It says, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purposes that prevails. Yes. You know, it's a great thing to know that unexpected things happen in our lives. Mm -hmm. They're gonna happen to all of us. But what's good to know, is that God is never taken by surprise and he has a plan and he has a purpose. Whether they're good things or bad things, he always has a plan to bring us through and it's working for our good. Well, to fail to plan is to plan to fail. So we're all making plans. And this is what I tell my young adult daughter, my teenage boys. It's good to write down goals. It's good to make plans and have your ideas and your thoughts, but trust God that he will lead, guide, and direct you throughout your whole life. And then like pastoring, you know, you, you picture this church and this planting of a church, you picture it flawless and perfect and growing and flourishing with no problems and no situations, and then it happens. Trauma hits, drama hits, pain hits, hurt hits, you know, bitterness hits, forgiveness is slapping you in the face every day, and you have to wake up and you have to say, God, I trust you, and that you're a God who will work out all things for my good for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Today, Sydney, we're gonna find some great purposes in the pain. Yeah, you know, I just love what you were sharing, Amy, because God was just really putting in my heart and in my spirit, you know, my family walking through like the unexpected things, you know, my brother-in-law that he suffered a traumatic injury with things that happened when he got hit by a car. Doctor said he wouldn't live again, he wouldn't talk again, wouldn't breathe again, all these things. And I just wanna encourage you, maybe, you know, what happens when we are hit with the unexpected, when we know we all have these things, we write out our plans, you know, it's the first of the year, we're like, oh, this is going to happen. We want this to happen. But what happens when the unexpected hits? What do we do when those things kind of knock us down? How do we get back up again? And I'm just really excited that we talked to Ryan Chazier today, yeah. hearing about his story about when, you know, it looked like impossible, but how you really have to lock in your faith with Jesus yeah. and just believe in him and trust in him to see miracles happen. Because I'm in a season, our family's life, we are literally seeing the miracle working power of God, Pastor Jay, and it is amazing. Well, you know, who better to have with us than Ryan Shazier, a man who knows how to deal with an audible. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because that's what's going to happen in life. You're going to get those unexpected audibles yeah. that are going to come your way. And you have to learn how to make shifts accordingly. But that's when God does his greatest work. And yeah. there's many of you right now that you're battling with something that's going on in your world. And you need to understand that God has a plan. He's got something great that he's going to use in all this situation. And that's what I love about his story, guys, yeah. is that he went through so much. But I 
I love his attitude mm -hmm. and the fact of how God used it mm -hmm. and how he's made the shift in his life in order to go places he's never gone before. Yeah, and you know, all eyes and all hearts were on Ryan Shazier and we're really excited to sit down and talk with him. He's going to take us to that moment on the field. He's going to take us in the moments in the hospital and he's going to tell us things that we didn't see in just a quick video clip. We'll be right back with an incredible life-changing story of Ryan Shazier. Your mind is a powerful thing. When you fill it with wisdom, your thinking begins to change. Your thoughts change your actions, and your actions change your life. Make 2022 a year like no other. When you give your best gift to CTVN, we'll send you this wisdom-packed devotional. Think on these things. Wisdoms for life from Proverbs will help you shape your thoughts for success in every area of your life. Each daily devotional includes a proverb for the day, a soul-searching question that helps you reflect and apply the principle to your own life, and continual reminders that we are to live with eternity in mind. Call 888-665-4483 or donate at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for helping Cornerstone Television start the year strong. If you are a huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan like myself, then you will be quite familiar with our next guest. Ryan Shazier was a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers when on December the 4th, 2017, he suffered a critical football injury that would forever change his life. He has a new book out called Walking Miracle, and he joins us now to share his story and to tell us how his faith positive thinking and passion for football brought him back from paralysis and helped him find purpose. Ryan, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you so much for having me. What a joy it was to see you walk up here on the set. Yeah, it's truly a blessing. Like you said, um, people didn't think I would make it to this point. Doctor said I had less than 20% chance to walk, but I just show you the power of God and how you can overcome anything and just the power of positive thinking. So uh, I'm just truly excited to be here and be able to walk on the stage. There's this theme song that the whole country knows. Dun, 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 dun. You know, it's Monday night football. <laughs> and the whole, you're either at the game or you're at the house. Nobody goes out in the whole city, right? We're all tuned in to Monday night football, NFL, who's playing. Will you take us to what it was like that day in 2017? What was the energy like when you walked out on the field? What was happening that day? When did you get up? What were you thinking? So Monday night footballs and Sunday night footballs are probably some of the biggest games of the week. Mm -hmm. So guys really plan for those. Some of them, some guys love them, some guys hate them. I love them because you're the only person on TV. Some guys was like, I want to get home early. But yeah. to me, it, it's, it's such a, so much energy when you have a Monday night, Sunday night type of game because it, it, you know you're going to get the best from each team that's playing. And going to Cincinnati, it was a really exciting game because we were kind of already close to sealing the division, but it was crazy because I actually wasn't supposed to play in this game because I had a, a small injury the day before, the week before. And I just was so wrapped up and turned up for the game, yeah. I decided to play. And it was, it was an awesome experience. It was an awesome game. And when Cincinnati and Pittsburgh play each other, it's a rivalry. So it's always, always a great game to play in, and especially when everybody's watching. Tell everybody like what time your day starts on a football day. This is unbelievable. So on a typical week, I, I used to wake up at 4.45 in the morning. And you know, I would wake up at 4 in the morning and I'll work out at 4.45. Then I would get to the facility at 6. And I'll watch some film beforehand and then we'll have meetings at 9. And we'll have meetings and then practice. After practice is over, I would do some type of rehab just to make sure my body is healthy so I can play in the game. But the day of a game, you don't, you don't really wake up as early because you kind of want all your energy. So on Monday night football games, the team will wake up early. We'll have a walkthrough earlier in the day. And then pretty much the rest of the day is just relaxing and just getting your mind right because you're not playing until 8 p.m. So it's a lot of waiting around and just wishing that you could play, you know, 12 o'clock, 4 o'clock, but you understand that it's a primetime game. And 
they want everybody to be home when they're watching you. So it was, it was it's really exciting. Yeah. So tell us about that moment in the game and the play was made and you made a tackle and you normally tackle with your head down as you describe in your book. What happened on this particular play? So what's crazy about this particular play and my coaches will even tell you after every practice, I used to actually practice on trying to tackle with my head up. I was trying my best and I always practice after every practice and, and with the tackling dummy, but it's a lot harder uh, tackling a real person than a tackling dummy. You know what a tackling dummy is going to do. You don't know what a real person is going to do. But in this situation, I knew it wasn't that hard of a tackle. It was a drag route. Malone was just crossing the field. And I told myself, this is actually a pretty easy tackle to make. This isn't a hard tackle to make. A linebacker with a receiver doing a drag route, that's almost a guaranteed tackle. In this situation, the NFL is trying to implement rules about safety. Mm -hmm. And in this, in this situation, I actually focused in on, let, let me make a a safe tackle because normally when I make a tackle it's not about let me try to make a big hit or let me try to sometimes I'll try to force a fumble or things like that but it wasn't from a big hit it was more about let me just get this guy down mm -hmm. but in this situation I was like hey let me make a you know a safe tackle try to get my head across and I and, uh, unanticipated his, how fast he was going and when I tried to get my head across it stuck my head out and I hit him in the hip and it was a typical tackle I made that tackle thousands of times but in that instant, I ended up fracturing my, some vertebrae in my back and caused me to have a spinal cord injury. I know that I probably speak for all of us that, you know, when we watched that game, it was like the world stopped. And I actually am kind of tearing up now, you know, seeing you walk up here, you know, just that moment that really all eyes on the country were on you, praying for you and believing God. And now to see visibly and physically the faithfulness of God in your life. And um, tell us about that moment when you got to the hospital. So on the way to the hospital, I had two phone calls. One was to my wife and the other one was to my dad. The phone call to my wife was more about just making sure she was okay because I knew she was probably sure. losing her mind. Yeah. And then to my father, I would just ask him to pray for me and just give me strength. So when I got to the hospital, pretty much it was thousands of lab coats or white jackets mm -hmm. and you know when anybody goes to a hospital they know what a white jacket is mm -hmm. so basically it was a thousand people in the room and I couldn't even see pretty much to the wall because there was so many doctors in there at the time and when I was there they did a few tests on me and after they did a few tests they was just trying to see how I would do and how I react and I was I was doing pretty well I was actually having a, a, a little bit of movement at the beginning but then after a while uh, it, it started to slow down again and uh, the Dodgers had to make a decision if they wanted to keep me in Pittsburgh or take me to Cincinnati. You know, I mean, take me to Cincinnati. I mean, yeah. take me from Cincinnati. Sorry. We would see all of these little, you know, news video feeds and, and a little taste of what was going on in your life. But can you take us to what you were battling mentally, spiritually, and emotionally as you're laying there, believing for the best? So some of the things that I, I try to focus on every day is just try to have a positive thinking. I always, no matter what I'm dealing with, I'm always trying to be as positive as possible. And sometimes it gets my wife mad, but in every situation, I always try to find a light in it. And the one thing that I was dealing with in this situation is I've never got hurt this bad. I've never been in a situation like this before. So I was almost oblivious to how bad it was. So I just told myself, hey, this injury is not that bad. It's just like any other injury, you can overcome it. And after a while, I started to notice that it was taking a little bit longer than I wanted to to recover. And I actually started to pay attention and talking to the doctors about how serious the injury I was having at the time. But the one thing that really helped me out a lot is just my family and my friends they all had positive thinking. They was all, sorry. They were all just behind my back and they all understood that no matter what, we had to believe that Ryan's gonna get better. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's okay, take a moment. You know, Ryan, just like hearing about that moment, I, can, I don't think any of us can really understand what it was like for you to be in the hospital room, hearing what the doctors were saying. Can you just talk to us about like the faith that your family, you even had to have like pulling together, being in that moment. It's a very, very traumatic situation and with your family, but there's something very special that your family made a decision for moving forward that when you were walking through your healing and recovery. It was really important just to have my family there. Uh, pretty much me and my mom are the most positive think of people that you'll probably ever meet. And then my wife and my dad are more realists. And the thing is, one thing that my family did, and I didn't even know that they did this, but they did it, they told me after the fact, is no matter who came in the room, no matter 
who was coming to visit me, they would meet him at the door and say, hey, Ryan doesn't look the same as he once looked. But if you're coming, coming to this room, no matter what, you have to believe that in the same purpose as Ryan believed. Ryan's going to walk again. Ryan's going to play football again. So if you don't believe those things, if you're going to talk negativity to him, you're not even allowed in the room. And I thought it was really important because my family, they didn't share the tear in front of me. Like my, my, they, didn't, they didn't have people around me that didn't believe in the same thing I believe. And I think it's really important to have people around you that believe in the same purpose as you because if you don't, then any little doubt can, can spread. And that's one thing that they didn't want to do. They didn't want to have any doubt in the room. Yes. You know, Ryan, you're in great company because that's what Jesus did. There were certain miracles he kept everybody out because he knew he needed a level of faith in there in order to produce, you know, if Jesus needed that, how much more do we need that? Even in this year, I believe this year, 2022 is a year of agreement. I think it's so important that we have that. What, uh, what was the turning point for you? I mean, obviously I know everybody knows that we could probably talk to you for the next hour on everything that you went through, but you know, you're, you're battling the fact that you're not going to play football again. What brought you to that point where you could make the shift in the change? Because you're still in the prime of your career. Everything's happening great for you. And then, bam, you know, you're finding yourself paralyzed there. How did you make that shift and make that transition? So at the beginning, it was very difficult to make a transition because I never imagined myself not being able to play football. I played football for 20 straight years without missing any games. Well, I would miss a game. I, I got injured in here or there. But I wouldn't miss a season. I wouldn't, mm -hmm. I, if I played or practiced, it was because I wanted to. I never could not not play. And it was definitely difficult the first two years when I first drove to Heinz Stadium, Heinz Field the first time after I got injured. My first time going, I was still part of the team. I drove and parked in the players' parking lot and I cried for about 10 minutes because before I walked in. And everybody understood what, what I was dealing with. They, they, didn't understand, they didn't understand it from their point of view, but they knew it was really hard for me. And after a while, I just started to notice hey, Ryan, it's time to move on. And I, I continued to feel like it was a possibility for me to play. But the one thing I started to really focus on and, and I actually got to do when I was hurt was I was spending a lot of time with my family and spending a lot of time with my kids. And I started to notice, and I, I definitely knew this before, but how important they are and that they meant way more to me than the game of football. Wow. So after a while, it stopped focusing on, hey, Ryan wants to play football again to Ryan wants to be around to be the best father as possible, wow. to be able to go to theme parks and, and wow. walk around and, and joke around with my kids and, and play with my kids. Um, at first, my mission was Ryan wants to be able to play football again and be the same player that he once was. But after a while, I started to focus on my family and just understand that this is way bigger than the game of football. And I, I changed my focus from that until, and, and, and that's how I was able to overcome it. So powerful. We were all hashtagging, you gotta Shay leave. I mean, Shay leave went viral, which is really what? It's believing. Yeah, yeah it's believing. So it was very funny because when we first came up with Shay leave, and this in the book, is that we was in the car and I think we picked up my mom or my brother from the airport. And I was in the car and I kept getting small injuries. The, my first two seasons, I missed nine games. I think it was more than nine games. My first two seasons when I played, and it was very frustrating. And some people will say, hey, Ryan, you know, he's Mr. Glass and this and that. And to me, I actually don't care much about what other people say. But after a while, you know, if people keep knocking you, it, it can get through. And one day I was in the car and I was like, man, I'm going to make everybody believe. I'm going to make everybody believe in Shazier. And my good friend was like, <laughs> and my best friend, his, his name was uh, Jerome. He was like, we're going to make everybody Shaleev. And I was like, Shaleev? And then we was, then we was in the car, I was like, Shaleev. It was like self-belief. So it's belief in yourself, but also believe in yes. Shazier. So whenever I made a play on the field, it's like, hey, everybody in Pittsburgh can believe in Shazier to make a play when it's needed. But to me, Shalif also means self-belief. Always believe in what you're trying to accomplish. Always believe in yourself. Yeah. Because if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. Mm -hmm. That's so, like, I love that, this, like, the believing in yourself. And I just remember a moment my husband and I were watching you, and I think the whole world was watching. We were in tears during the 2018 NFL draft when you were walking with your wife on stage. Can you take us to that moment and what it meant for you two to just be walking hand in hand and you walking really in front of the world? Yeah, that was a combination of two things. It was very nerve-wracking. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really a nervous person in front of a lot of people because obviously I play football, but it was really nerve-wracking because that's the farthest I've walked from the moment I was doing my rehab. 
And I had seen Roger Goodell one time in Pittsburgh. I seen him twice, and I, I told him that I want to be able to, you know, walk out of the, the Super Bowl or walk out the draft. And we, we discussed it. And one thing I told my trainers is, hey, I, I told this guy I'm going to do this. So we just put in full gear about how to be able to accomplish that goal. And I started to really focus in on trying to walk. And I was already walking a little bit, but that was the furthest I walked without my canes, without my walker. And just to be able to show so many people I'm getting better and thank you for your prayers, it really meant a lot to me. You know, Ryan, uh, a lot of people may be walking through difficult situations right now and hardships in their life. Let me ask you this question. How did this help you? How did it help you? What, what did it change about your thinking? And how did your faith play a role in that? I think it's, it's multiple ways I can answer that question, but I, I think the biggest thing is when I was playing, I was a very strong believer in, in, in Christ. And, but I noticed myself starting to stray a little bit. I noticed that I wasn't as focused as I was. And I think it was two things that God did. He, he showed, hey, Ryan, you know, like you said, God's word will prevail. So God decided, hey, Ryan, I'm going to use you to let everybody know no matter what you're doing, no matter who you are, uh, adversity hits. But I think the Lord used me to show that no matter what hits, we can overcome it. We can fight through this and we can, we can achieve, achieve a goal. So when I got hurt, one thing I definitely did, it was lean more on God. And I, I did, I had my ups and downs and if, if anybody doesn't have ups and downs, then they're not human. Exactly. But I, I think it really allowed me to focus in and just thank God because he showed me no matter what and no matter who you are, that you can prevail, you can overcome and you can help so many people and let them understand that adversity hits, no matter who you are. Everybody's adversity is different, but adversity hits. and through God, you can overcome it. And I, I think that's one of the things that really helped me understand that God's hand is really over our lives, but also that God has a purpose of me helping others and allowing them to understand no matter the situation that you're dealing with, that it's possible to overcome it. You just gotta continue to believe in God. What men or stories in the Bible did you glean from during this time? Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, I don't know if this is really a story in the Bible, but it was a passage that really stuck with me. And I know uh, God is not a big fan of tattoos, but I have a few. And, yeah. <laughs> and one of the tattoos that I have on myself is, uh, uh, I can do all, through, all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. And, and to me, I really held on to that and just understood yeah. no matter what the situation is, I can, I can overcome this situation. No matter how deep the valley is, I can overcome this, this valley. And yeah. that's, a, that's another passage. I think it's uh, Psalms 28. Uh, though I walk through the, shallow, the, the valley of death, yeah. uh, I, will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. Yeah. And to me, those are two of the biggest passages that I really focused on yeah. and just continue to believe in and just know that it really feels like I'm in a really deep valley. Mm -hmm. but, I, but God's going to allow me to overcome this and just me believing that I can overcome it will as well. Yeah. And I'm sure your dad, uh, being a pastor, as well. A lot of people may not know this, but his dad is a pastor, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure that probably helped a little bit him throwing a few up for you. Was your dad instrumental in walking you through this process and his faith being that rock for you? Yeah, my dad is very instrumental just in my life in general. Uh, from being a little kid to even now, uh, I was on the phone with my dad probably the whole time I was on my ride here. Yeah. Uh, he's a very you know strong human being and a very uh, I'm not gonna say positive because he's more of a realist, but, <laughs> but he's, a, he's, a, he's a very strong man. And one thing that really helped me out was that to see his strength through the adversity that I was dealing with. Because my dad told me after I got hurt um, and after I got better, he'll say, when I got injured, he probably cried 10 times a day, but I didn't see him cry once. Wow. And to me, it just shows the strength of him saying, no matter what you're dealing with, Ryan, I'm gonna be right here for you. And yeah, it's gonna be tough yeah. for me, but I'm gonna show you that I'm gonna be strong for you. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna get away. I'm not get away from you, but I'm gonna mm -hmm. leave mm -hmm. from the room when I have a weak moment. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really strong of him. Wow. Yeah, that's that's really like one thing I just learned. I know um, I think it's just really powerful. Is like what you're doing now is because what you've walked through. Now you're giving hope to others. Can you talk to us a little bit about your fund that you're helping others with yeah. your spinal injuries? Yeah, so I have the Ryan Shazier Fund for spinal rehabilitation, and it's for helping others that have spinal cord issues, um, that's going through traumatic injuries like myself. And I try to tell people 
Uh, a lot of people are trying to learn how to walk again. A lot of tr people are trying to get independence again. And the average person that has a spinal cord injury may get 30 or 40 sessions of rehab. And I, I, this is the example I use. If you only gave somebody 30 chances to learn how to walk as a baby, we'll have a lot of grown-ups still crawling around here. And to me, I just wanted to give people more opportunities, more resources to allow them the ability to get independence again because I, I'm able to walk, but that, I'm not saying that everybody's going to be able to walk again, but there are ways through the injury that you become independent again, that you can enjoy life, and the injury sometimes can strip that away from somebody, and I want to be able, I want to allow people to have that. Wow. You know, in your book, I was shocked to read the statistics of spinal injuries in the NFL, and you give statistics of the defensive line, you know, offensive line, special teams, and looking back now, at those statistics, what goes through your thought as you've seen God's thumbprint on your whole life? Sometimes uh, those, those statistics are crazy because you just never know the situation that you'll be in and they're so small. And for me, it was just really important to understand the statistics, but also understand the power of God because somebody may say you have 20%, you have 30% or one or 2%, right. but it, I tell people all the time, only 1% of people made the NFL. Only 1% of the people that made the NFL made the Pro Bowl. You know, less than 25% of people have alopecia. And I've, I've came through a lot of things in my life and I've overcame all those things. And to me, I just use those same type of metrics through my life to overcome all the situations that I dealt with and just continue to believe in, in, in myself. Ryan, you are a champion. You're an overcomer. Amen. You are a walking miracle. And we just, we celebrate you and honor you, what God has done in your life. Any last words to somebody who has been hit with something really traumatic in their life recently and they feel like there's no hope? What would you say? The, the biggest thing I would tell somebody that's going through a, a, something traumatic is just lean on God, but just also understand that no matter what you're dealing with, you have to believe in yourself as well. Most people, when they're going through a tough situation, it's really hard for them to think what's the positive out of this? What, how can I overcome this? But one thing you have to really focus in is how you can get through this, how you can overcome this, and just God is big. Mm, thank so you. good, so much. And we are just so grateful that you have been with us for this important and special conversation with Ryan Jazeera. And it's time for us all to believe all things are possible through Jesus Christ. So we just hope you hold on to that today. No matter what you're going through, no matter what the mountain or the valley looks like, know that God is with you. We thank you so much for joining us for Hope Today. We love you, be blessed, and have a wonderful weekend.